We come together today to recognize Good Friday as our Lord Jesus Christ takes that long walk to the cross and to his crucifixion. We hope that this time you will be able to spend some time thinking about what our Lord went through. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The first station, Jesus in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Lord Jesus, you entered the garden of fear and faced the agony of your impending death. Be with those who share that agony and face death unwillingly in this day. You shared our fear and knew the weakness of our humanity. Give strength and hope to the dispirited, to you, Jesus, who sweated blood. Be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The second station, the betrayal of Judas, a reading from the gospel according to Mark. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords, with the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. 
Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him and he said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. Lord Jesus, you were betrayed by the kiss of a friend. Be with those who were betrayed and slandered and falsely accused. You knew the experience of having your love thrown back in your face from your silver. Be with families which are torn apart by mistrust. To you, Jesus, who offered your face to your betrayer, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The third station, Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin, a reading from the Gospel of Mark. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days, I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the Holy One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Lord Jesus, you were the victim of religious bigotry. Be with those who are persecuted by small-minded authority. You face the condemnation of fearful hearts. Deepen the understanding of those who shut themselves off from the experience and wisdom of others. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The fourth station, Jesus judged by Pilate. A reading from the gospel according to Mark. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Lord Jesus, you were condemned to death for political expediency. Be with those who are imprisoned for the convenience of the powerful. You were the victim of unbridled injustice. Change the minds and the motivations of oppressors and exploiters to your way of peace. To you, Jesus, innocent though condemned, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The fifth station, Jesus scourged and crowned with thorns. A reading from the gospel according to Mark. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. Lord Jesus, you face the torment of barbaric punishment and mocking tongue. Be with those who cry out in physical agony and emotional, holy, and emotional distress. You endeared unbearable abuse. Be with those who face torture and mockery in our world. To you, Jesus, the King crowned with thorns, 
be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and mortal, have mercy upon us. Jesus carries the cross, the sixth station. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his own clothes. Then they led him out to crucify him. Lord Jesus, you carried the cross through the rough streets of Jerusalem. Be with those who are loaded with burdens beyond their strength. You bore the weight of our sins when you carried the cross. Help us to realize the extent and the cost of your love for us. To you, Jesus, bearing a cross not your own, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy <coughs> upon us. The seventh station. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Lord Jesus, you were worn down by fatigue. Be with those from whom life drains all energy. You needed the help of a passing stranger. Give us the humility to receive aid from others. To you, Jesus, weighed down with exhaustion and in need of help, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The eighth station, Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A reading from the gospel according to Mark. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. Lord Jesus, you bled in pain as the nails were driven into your flesh. Transform through the mystery of your love the pain of those who suffer. To you, Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The ninth station, Jesus promised the kingdom to the penitent thief. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the gospel according to Luke. One of the criminals who were hung there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Lord Jesus, even in your deepest agony, you listened to the crucified thief. Hear us as we unburden to you our deepest fears. You spoke words of love in your hour of death. Help us to speak words of life to a dying world. To you, Jesus, who offered hope to the hopeless, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever, amen. Holy God, holy and strong, 
holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The tenth station, Jesus on the cross, his mother and his friend. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to John. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Lord Jesus, your mother and your dearest friend stayed with you to the bitter end. Yet even while racked with pain, you ministered to them. Be with all broken families today and care for those who long for companionship. You care for your loved ones, even in your death throes. Give us a love for one another that is stronger even than the fear of death. To you, Jesus, loving even in the face of death, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The 11th station, Jesus dies on the cross. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemme sadati, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus cried a loud cry and breathed his last. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross and entered the bleakest of all circumstances. Give courage to those who die at the hands of others. In death, you entered into the darkest place of all. Illumine our darkness with your glorious presence. To you, Jesus, your lifeless body hanging on the tree of shame, be honor and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The twelfth station, Jesus laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, came down from heaven to take the human nature of man. And scripture reminds us how the Lord Jesus walked among us, performing miracles, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, driving out evil spirits, giving life to the dead, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, offering a place in his heavenly kingdom to any and to all who would profess his holy name, believing in him and in his father who sent him. So as he walked among us, he experienced everything we as humans experience, hunger, thirst, fatigue, resentment, joy, happiness, friendship, and even rejection. He allowed himself to be subjected to temptation, ridicule, torture, and humiliation. He experienced temptation in the wilderness. He experienced anger when he cleared the temple. 
and he experienced emotion when he wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. He experienced joy when he was surrounded by his children or by children. He ate with sinners, counseled with Pharisees, gave hope to the downcast and fed thousands with a fish and five barley loaves. But there was one thing he had not experienced until he was nailed on the cross. He took the sins of man on his shoulders and then not only experienced sin, but the result of sin. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus experienced for the first time and the only time God turning away from him. There is a, a song that I'm really uh, fond of uh, it's entitled, There is uh, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And the lyrics actually tear right into our very souls. Some of the lyrics goes this, it goes like this. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wreck his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sins upon his shoulder. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there. And the song goes on. I have to admit with shame that I, I cannot count the times in my life when, when an action made me feel like God had turned his face away from me. And, and I'm sure today in, in this time that we're facing the strong peril that many of us are feeling the same, that God has turned his face away from us. But the times that I tearfully begged God to help me when I knew I was wrong, but there, there, were, there were times in my younger life when I felt so up against a wall with no relief in sight and not knowing how I was going to survive. But what I would later come to realize is what Jesus or God had done for me was to allow me to work through my problems and to strengthen me with new resolve. Even the mistakes in my youth had been turned to growth that only made me stronger. But make no mistake, he will not look upon sin, but he will always offer forgiveness and love. Jesus, for the first time in his human life, felt abandoned. He was alone among the scoffers. Jesus was fulfilling scripture in the sense that he repeated the words of David in the 22nd Psalm. David so accurately described the suffering the Messiah would experience. And David must have been facing a great trial at that time himself, but his words so describe what Jesus was being accosted with. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I am a worm, not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts the Lord, let the Lord rescue him. But the sins of man heaped on his shoulder, Jesus was alone, not to be rescued from the cross. I wonder if there's a time in your life when you have felt and that God turned his face away from you. And maybe it's during this terrible, terrible pandemic as you watch loved ones suffer. A time when you were desperate for an answer or for help, and yet there was no answer, no help. And yet, here we are today in God's presence, not necessarily in his home, but God's church is the world. It's your living room. It's the field outside. It's the stores where we shop. And we're in his presence, still worshiping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because you know God was always there and things worked out. Maybe not exactly the way you or me or anyone wanted or maybe even not the way you prayed for. But God has placed a faith in your soul to assure you he loves you and hears your prayers. Hear the words of the psalmist in the 86th Psalm. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are kind and forgiving, O Lord, abounding in love to all 
who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. And from 1 Timothy, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. I want to repeat the uh, prayer from the 10th station because it is so appropriate today. Lord Jesus, your mother and your dearest friend stayed with you to the bitter end, yet even while racked with pain, you ministered to them. Here, be with all broken families today, especially today, Father and Lord Jesus, and care for those who long for companionship. You cared for your loved ones, even in your death throes. Give us a love for one another that is stronger even than the fear of death. Such strong words for today. This time, we're going to hear from Dr. Andre playing, Were You There? Let me offer a bidding prayer. Dear members of God's family, we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for our bishop, our pastor, and all the servants of the church. We pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. We pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. We pray for those who do not believe in God. We pray for God's creation. We pray for those who serve in public office. We pray for those in any need. We pray for all afflicted by the coronavirus. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.